Hello. Hello. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Yes, you are uh, uh, Angelina, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, and my apologies for for being late. I actually clicked I, on a different link, and I was waiting in a different room. <laughs> And I was like, where is she? And and then I checked the link that I was on. I was on the link that's for tomorrow. Oh. So my, my deepest apologies. Okay. Oh, uh, no worries. Okay. Um, so I'll extend your time. Quite difficult repertoire you're playing for me today. Thank the, you. The list. Uh, and what, uh, what, what's the other one that you're supposed to play? Uh, Rachmaninoff. The Rachmaninoff. Wow. Those are quite challenging repertoire. Uh, which one do you want to start with today? Uh, I'll start with the list. Start with the list. But before we do, okay, uh, how old are you now? Um, I'm 12, Justin. Oh my goodness, those are tough repertoire for a 12-year-old. Uh, congratulations. Thank uh, you. Let's start our um, lesson with some mindfulness exercises, okay? Okay. Yeah, so sit uh, on your bench and face your piano, and we're going to uh, close our eyes. And we're going to breathe in and breathe out. And each time you feel your body breathe in, just say in in your mind. And each time you feel the air come out, just say out in your mind. And do it a few times. Just in. teachers. Breathe out for everything that they have taught us. Breathe in. We're going to thank our beautiful instrument, <coughs> Steinway Piano, for producing beautiful sounds when we play. And breathe in. We thank all the composers of our, the music that we play. Breathe out for the genius that they teach us. Okay, let's start, shall we? Yes. Okay.
Thank you for sharing that beautiful music. Uh, it's morning for me still. I'm in the, I'm in the West Coast because uh, I'm, I'm in uh, I'm in Seattle. Um, I live in Seattle. So, um, congratulations! You're already doing so many beautiful things on it, and should be very very proud of yourself. And thank your teacher so much because you know it's not easy teaching kids such complicated music. Now let's get to work. How many legato touches do you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
Angelina. As in, like, when you're playing? Yeah, interesting question, isn't it? How many different yeah. kinds of legato touches do you know? Well, I know the ones that are, like, are just, like, very um, flowy. And there's also the ones that are, like, kind of... It still counts as a legato, even... Because, like, it's like a legato line over it, and there's staccato dots on it. Okay, now, I'll teach you today because you're already playing this so beautifully and the first yeah. thought that came to my mind when you were playing it was gosh if she can vary those legatos have nuances in the legatos even more this is going to be spectacular <laughs> like it already is spectacular it's going to be even more spectacular right and so today i'm just i think what i can transmit to you as a gift <laughs> is to teach you my different types of legatos okay okay so first extreme legato i call it or um number one legato i call it the overlap legato for example you know overlap where the notes completely overlap from each other they completely totally overlap like a pedal legato you know that's a, I call that the overlap legato. And there's uses for that, especially, for example, when one hand is playing too many notes and you want to get a pedal effect on, the, for example, the other hand or the left hand, too many notes, and you cannot really pedal too much. Otherwise, it gets very dirty, messy, right? And then the right hand can do a, a, what I call pedal legato or overlap legato. That's the extreme case. Now, in between the types of legatos, there's a whole universe in between them. So number, let's go number two, okay? Okay. Number two is what I call the clinging legato. Clinging legato because they don't completely overlap, they just overlap a tiny bit in between. For example. You hear it? Yes. Now, that clinging legato is probably our closest um, way to imitate when a singer does this Ta oh. Ta oh, for example if i go right Ta yeah. so whenever we have that um, singers have a, a very uh, beautiful vocal slide we call it Ta you see how it kind of did a glissando in between isn't it Yes. But on the piano, we can do this. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. <laughs> it sounds cheesy. Yeah. Right? It sounds cheesy, but singers, they do it so naturally. It doesn't sound... See how each note has a slide, isn't it? Yes. And it makes the pitch rounder. Um, and so, you know, it's very useful, you know... So you got, it kind of round, like it simulates that singingness to it. That's, so that's the clinging. And of course, you can adjust the clingingness. Some, some notes can have more clinging, some have less, right? Yeah. Now, the third legato is the simple one. That, that's the one we learn, all of us. Just connect the notes, you know? For example, we have... Right? Yeah. Just simple, you know? Simple, you connect the notes, there's no overlap just a uh, pure connection it's very clear and it's very useful for pieces that are kind of like a sh sing spiel you know like a, a, a s slightly singing but also kind of talking at the same time you know like i am going to the park <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it has to be slightly more clearer you know it's like a uh, um then so that's the simple legato then the number four is what I call poco legato, or some people call it non legato. For my little tiny six year olds, or five year olds, and even four year olds, I, I say it's the tiny bubble staccato. Tiny bubble because there is a tiny little bit of gap 
between the notes. But it's just like a little bubble, you know, like... Can you hear it? Like... like, like right? And then, yeah. look, I, look, this is what I'm referring to, like, varying the, the legato. See, if I have a tiny bubbles here, and then here I have a clean legato. Did you hear the difference between yeah. the, the tiny bubbles and then the clinging legato? It makes it so much more expressive. Right? It, because now you, what I'm giving you are tools so that you can express freely what you're feeling. Because you have so much musicality when you're playing this. And sometimes I feel like, oh, maybe perhaps if you have more tools, you will know how to translate what you're feeling into touch. Okay. Got it? Yes. So that's the non legato, poco legato. Then the number five, the last one, is the portato. Now, portatos are quite painful because they are really staccatos that desperately want to be legatos. <laughs> right? And so yeah. in this, the sound and the sensation of it, it's like playing legato with one finger. And doing your best, you see, doing your very best, like, oh, it's a bit labored, you know? Yes! You know, there's this uh, sh uh, passage in the uh, Schubert Sonata in A minor, the middle part of it, the second thing. It's all portato. it's old you know like an old man yeah. right yeah now when i was younger when i started playing it i played it with a simple legato and it sounded like this it's pretty but it doesn't sound so you know it's like the other one sounds like an old man that have experienced life mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right now, yeah. The other one sounds like a teenager that doesn't know anything, <laughs> right? Yeah. So by changing the touch of it, I was able to channel that old man. Miki, sometimes we feel something, right? But it doesn't come out. And, and then we change our touch and then it's like, oh, there it, there it is. You know, it's like we open the door. For, for for the expression to come out. So with those five legatos, right? Let's extend it to pedaling. Okay. For example, when I'm pedaling a, a chord, you know, uh, if I want, I, well, this is what I call a, a clinging pedaling, you know? When you have a... a Some, my pedaling kind of overlaps a little bit. Yes. Because I am mixing, actually, I'm actually mixing some of the chords, fraction of a second. What it does, it, it enables the chords to sit gently. But if I change the pedal abruptly or, you know, like, like simple change of pedal, yeah. it sounds like this. See how much it's cleaner, yes. Yes. But it's less special. <laughs> because this one, it's almost like I'm in a church, you know? Because they're mixing a little bit, there's an echo. younger and learned this concerto I was about 
Yeah, I was quite young when I learned that concerto. And I didn't have those tools. And I could feel the expression in my heart. I can feel it in my body, but it couldn't get out. And when I finally learned these tools of legato, I was like, oh, that's how I can bring it out, right? So let's scour this piece, right? Let's start from page one because that's a lot of recitativo there, right? Yes. Um, so you have staccatos on, oh, by the way, sorry. Since we're in the business of different touches, staccatos have five as well. <laughs> staccatos. For example, staccatissimo. And we're going to start with the very, very shortest one, right? Staccatissimo. It's just an in and out, in and out staccato. And usually you can use that by just using your wrist. See, pop. Staccatissimo. No pluck, no finger movement, but just pop. Shortest, driest, and shortest. Then the second one is a pizzicato. We know this because we were used to plucking. You see? <laughs> see how when you pluck it, it kind of sort of rings a little bit longer because the finger stays longer on the key for a fraction of a second. Yes. Got it. Right. So that's the pizzicato. In between them, you can adjust. Now, um, then the simple legato. Simple legato is just uh, separated. Just separate it, you know? That's simple legato. Oh, I'm sorry, simple staccato. Then number four is the tenuto. You know those notes with a dash on top? Yes. Yeah. Now those are kind of like a deliberate staccato. Pa, 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 pa. They're more pedantic. It's yes. like, I'm ordering you. <laughs> like, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's the, the feeling that it gives, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, of course, the number five is the portato. The painful portato. That's the that's, staccato that wants to be a legato. <laughs> so, we're going to then, let's use the first page as an example. Okay, let's scour it, okay? So, okay. on the first line, you have staccatos. What kind yeah. of staccatos will you use for that? I think I might use the tenuto kind or the, the one before. See, the... you have a combo there, see? The first two uh, the first two chords are staccato and then you have tenuto on the quarter note octaves. Do you see the tenuto? Yeah. Did you notice it before? Yes. Um, oh, I meant the staccato at the ending. Oh, the, at the ending. Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, for the first two chords, right? For the first two chords, what kind of staccato would you want? And of course, you have tenuto on the, on the, on the octaves afterwards, right? Yes. So let's see if we can vary those touches even more. So okay. what have you decided to use? I think it's. Um. What was uh, there was one before the tenuto? It was like the a simple. Short... Yes, okay. the simple one. Just a simple one? Okay, good. Simple and then make sure that the tenuto are, are kind of pedantic. <laughs> Hold it. Okay, let's try. Okay. Good, 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 good. Now, let's talk about those rests. Because... I think if it's too pedaled, right, then we lose those rests. And then we also, because of the pedal, it all kind of starts to sound with the same articul or the same touch, isn't it? Right? So let's try for those staccatos a bit shallower and drier pedal. And then if you can clear the pedal when you have the Clear the pedal so that we can really hear the pedanticness of those octaves. I find that a lot more interesting. Don't you think? Yeah, for me, that was, I, I could hear more expression there because I could hear a difference between those staccatos now and the tenutos. Bravo! You're so, you're so talented. So quick. Now, the second line, the start of that adagio, those octave, 
has a legato and then a staccato at the end. What kind of legato are we going to use for that adagio, Akna? Use some maybe the one that's not so clingy, like just simple. Yes, yeah, try it and let's see. Good, good, good. Now. It's very expressed from the staccato and the tenuto, right? Then all of a sudden the adagio has a very expressive nature and a very singing. So there I would use clinging. Okay. Right? Because you want a little bit of, um, not a little bit, but quite a contrast from the first four measures and all the way to the adagio, you're like, oh, it's singing. The other one is somewhat more, more speaking, more pedantic. But then comes adagio. Oh, it's very... Now, let's try again from the agitato asai with those staccatos and tenuto. And then adagio, really cling on those. Make the sound overlap a tiny bit. Good, good, good. I love it. See, it's so much more expressive. Now, the, the descending. Da, 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 da. It's legato, except for the last two. Like, it's, it's, it's very, very legato, except for the last two, which is a portato. Right? Now, so maybe cl really cling, or maybe oh, increase the overlap going down. And then... Even though you're playing it different finger, feel the portato as if you're playing it with one finger. There's a labored quality to it. Okay. It's, it's, it's almost, when, when, when composers use portato, they don't want it to be too easy. Okay. They don't want it to feel too easy or too, um, yeah, it, it has that kind of, oh, that angst. Yeah. yeah. So we see within that uh, descending arpeggio, you can vary the expression through the touch. You want to try it again from the adagio? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good. That's so much better. Uh, next, I, no, next tool I want to give you. When you're playing, right, it, this happens to us, most, most, most of us pianists, is that we're only concerned about how we're pressing, isn't it? Do you think about how you're releasing? Yes. Oh. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because often, for example, when we have releases right when you have the right you see that rest there yeah right now if we there's a fade away release where we can do it's like fade away the pedal kind of lifts and then it lets the sound dissipate but maybe sometimes we don't want it to fade away. Maybe we want it a little bit more. See, it made the rests a lot more powerful, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So I'm not saying 
I'm not dictating you do this, do that, do this, do that, right? <laughs> but I'm giving you kind of like an insight. For example, that second line, right? Yes. There are places where, you know, for example, second line, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the first measure ended with a staccato, isn't it? Yes. So it seemed to me that if, if I were to ask Liszt, Dear uh, benevolent, <laughs> beloved friends, list. What do you mean with that staccato? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, what does it mean? And and then there's that those. He took time to write that rest in both hands. So I I I find oh. He wants that rest. Right? So I'm, I'm not going to dictate. I'm just trying to tell you what I see. Right? And then if you look at line three, look at that eighth note with a fermata. Rest. The eight rest with a fermata. What does that tell you? Um, I think it tells me it's a really big dynamic change since the first one, it's very powerful and it's very bold and very yeah. just like big but the second one it's a little bit more timid and it's, it's a little bit more wondering now look at the third line that's one two three four five six seven eight measure eight third line right do you yeah. see the eighth rest with a fermata yes i do what do you think he means with that um i think it means a dress well not a drastic but just like a small change in small change right so yeah. i think and how will you emphasize that for mata rest how will you, how can you make it more effective so but, for yeah, yeah my my the, uh, going to my question right so you have um you know here um Now, is that rest a, a, more of a fade away or more um, abrupt? You see, good question, isn't it? Yes. Right? So, on the first part of the adagio, you have a staccato. I think that is more abrupt. And and the hand kind of like, not too, too, that it's not abrupt that you clip it, but make sure it's cleaner rest. Yes. Now, on the second one, on that second fermata the, the, I mean, the, the fermata with an eight I think that's a fade away <laughs> you want to give it a try okay let's see if we can get those rests okay so are you pedaling through okay. are you pedaling through it those me that measure yes. yes now my suggestion is this no. oh, sorry. No. to have a breath because even the next you know release the pedal because even on the next next measure you start with both rests on right hand and left hand now when you release the pedal time it with the release of your finger so so the right hand and the left hand will have to so on the, they would have to release together you see it yes. they would have to release together because their rests are tight and it has a beautiful effect it's almost like it's like a sigh and then start to get the then start that, you know, like what you were doing, right? Yes. It will be more expressive. And then when you go to the multi expressive, you go, right? And then you have, that can, see, where did he put 
the 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 uh, in this edition the change of pedal was on the E, right? It means that he wants that to sound alone. Right. And then that you can control, you know, that note you can lift your finger very 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 slowly off the key so it fades away and then you match it with the pedaling as well. You see how just this few measures there's is there's already a lot more you can do. Yes. Yeah, and like I said, it's it's a tool gift that I'm giving you because this you can use anywhere, any piece. Right? Once it's it's those things that once we learn to do, it's like riding a bike. We don't forget it. And then then you will learn other pieces and you would remember this lesson it's like, oh, what legato should I use for this? <laughs> what release should I use for this? It's like a, a seed that I've planted in your head that's got stuck. Yeah. It will just grow, <laughs> right? So let's try again from the adagio and be mindful of your touch, be mindful of the rests and how you release your hands. Okay, try. <laughs> Angelina, I'm I'm happy now. It gave me goosebumps <laughs> when you were playing it. Very good, very good. I know now that that you will you will apply this and everything. So, um, let's go to the cantabile compassione senza slentare. What does that mean? Um, sing with passion and senza slentare. What's slentare? I don't know. Senza means without. Slentare means dragging. Okay. So what he means is that it needs to keep moving forward. Right? Yes. Now let's try just maybe those uh, that for the second line from page 160, uh, the second page. Okay. And let's see if we can keep it singing without dragging. And I'll tell you where, where I feel it's dragging a little bit. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. How do you treat your phrases? How many bars per small phrase? first bar has like the first two bars it's a first yes first two bars so now there is a common tendency that there you know it's a bar line and psychologically we think it's like a wall yes and as kids we kind of like da 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 uh, uh, then we so fly over that bar line so da, 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 rush towards it i'm not saying rush a little bit towards it yeah. but instead of being too metric about it you know, um, Martha Argerich, the great Martha Argerich, the, the reason why I love her, love, love, love her so much. Some people say she plays too fast, but I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> but you know her tempo, some people play so, so kind of vertical like that. Mm -hmm. But her tempo is always slightly leaning forward. Yes. And it creates that excitement. It's always moving forward. And, and you know, it's like when we're walking, when we lean our body slightly forward, propels us yeah right so 
think of your your tempo not too standing straight but slightly leaning forward yeah let's try okay Bravo! Didn't that feel more passionate? Yes. Ah, a big difference from my ear, you know, and, and also again, it gave me goosebumps. <laughs> you are very, you are so incredibly talented, my dear. Um, and so that's what you need to do here on this section, is that to make sure, just keep, you know, lean your tempo slightly forward. Yes. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. Um, and of course, here you know, see he are exploring many, many different legato touch, touches, right? Yes. Even if you look at what one, two, three, four, the fourth line, you see those G's have tenuto. Yes. And in the and when he has that in uh, 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 the accent, and then portato, pop, pop, that's more painful, isn't it? right but then on the third line he has tenutos like that's more kind of ordering <laughs> and it's so clever because then it ensures that it's never redundant if we are not mindful of it we might play it exactly the same way as how we played it before right so be mindful of those changes so that you can have that a change, uh, as a change of uh, expression, maybe. Now, let's go to third page when you have those fast filigrees <laughs> going up. What kind of legato would you use for that? Um, I think I would use a little clinch, like the second clinch, maybe not too clinchy. Oh, that was a now, try this. Might be a bit difficult, but try the tiny bubbles. Try it first, try it first, try it. Because it will make it sound lighter and floating. You know, try from maybe a measure before get into it. And then very light, tiny bubble legato. When you go Okay. Did that, how did that feel to you? It felt different. It, like, it, felt, it felt fun to play. It's like, it's still dramatic, but it's in a lighter way dramatic. Yes, because there's an accelerando, right? Yes. And if we cling on it, right? If we do yes. too clinging of a legato, it will bug us down. Mm -hmm. And what he wants with that accelerando for it to fly. Now, with the tiny bubbles, since there is a separation, it's like there's an air. It causes the sound to float more. Ah, <laughs> mindfulness, isn't it? <laughs> when we're mindful of our touch, there's so many different possibilities. So that's one example of it. You know, there's many... The, the uh, different passages, for example, um, uh, b -b 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 one, two, three, the third system, second measure. Mm -hmm. You know, the right hand has those yes. fast going up. You yeah. know, for those to float, you know, you you can do a that kind of tiny legato, uh, tiny bubble legato. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right for for those things. Okay. Um, now those double thirds are tricky, isn't it? Yeah. You see, he's, he wrote non legato. Uh, yes. Now, try to. Vi this is what you do with those double thirds: is to vibrate your hand da -da 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 within the key. See, you only need about half an inch to press the key, right? Yes. And how we get stuck with double thirds is because we move up and down too much. Okay. Right. Now we only need half an inch, right? So try to bounce your your hand 
less than half an inch. Okay. Try. Try from maybe from the uh, approach it, maybe from the fortissimo. Okay. How did that feel? Way easier. So I say it again. Yeah, it felt way easier than before. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah. And, and it's it's the physics of playing the piano because we only have half an inch of key um depth, you know? Yes. And we don't really move need to move more than that. <laughs> Especially when you're playing fast, you want to decrease it to like even less than like a quarter of an inch. It's more than enough. You know, efficiency of movement. So those things. So my dear, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed this lesson, and thank you for sharing your music. Unfortunately, we're out of time, <laughs> but I know. But um, I that's why I kind of wanted to give you those tools because I know that with these tools, you will bring it to all your your other pieces, and it will be as beautiful as as what you just did just now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's, it's such a gift to hear such beautiful playing. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate this. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.